has shown to be a promising contact hitter. He's shown to have a promising eye at the plate, a promising amount of speed when it comes to steals. And he's shown some really promising defense in the form of some of the more spectacular outfield catches that anyone made anywhere in Major League Baseball. So why is it that we, the figurative we, seem to have just thrown this guy right out of the future plans? Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Bay is 24 years old. That's it. That is a child. That's an infant in baseball years. And he came up at the start of this past season after, here comes that word again, a promising spring training and turned that promise into real production, including even a couple of home runs. Remember the one at Fenway Park? Big one at PNC Park, won a game. And you thought, wow, we all did. Wow, this kid's got something. He looks like he might be the answer to center field or some field or whatever, maybe even at an infield position. But as the season went along, uh, he didn't really. He lost his eye at the plate to an extent, began swinging, even flailing out of the zone with some really clumsy, awkward, feel sorry for the guy kind of swings. And then some of that, I don't know if this was coincidence or what, but seemed to carry into the field, especially at second base, a position that he really can't play. Uh, Couldn't make a throw to first base, even a routine double play relay by the time September had rolled around. And from there, he just kind of, you know, fell off. Most people's projections, it seemed like, for what the 2024 lineup could be. And you know what? I'm one of those people, so I'm not pointing a finger here. The next projected lineup that that I make for the Pirates for next year that has him on, it'll be the first. I don't even know that he'll be on the bench. But I do know that there is still something promising about this kid. It feels like... It feels like that the promising element isn't that far away. It's not like he has seven or eight different things to correct as I see it. When he was staying in the zone, when he was staying within his zone, his strike zone, working to his strengths, and in particular, being aware that his strike zone, or not his strike zone, but his his hitting zone is a little bit wider horizontally than most because of his ability to just casually drop the ball into left field going oppo. That's a plus for him. So what he really needed to do more than anything else, I feel like, was recognize off-speed pitches, lay off certain junk, even if it means looking at a strike, being fully aware that he's just not going to do anything with it. But this isn't someone that you'd look at and say, I mean, lost cause. You know, this isn't, this is going to be mean, but this isn't like when you watch Nick Gonzalez strike out all the bleeping time. And and you've seen Gonzalez strike out at every level of the minors, and then you see him do it in the majors, and you go, okay, this is just someone who occasionally cannot make contact with the ball. That is not the case with Bay. It really isn't. Bay finished, for the record, the season in 334 official at-bats, 231 batting average, the two home runs I referenced, 32 RBIs, 24 steals. He was caught stealing nine times. All of those happened later in the year, and I'm convinced that was part of this uh, crisis of confidence as well. A 607 OPS isn't going to get it done, and that's what he had. And a lot of that was by virtue of not having walks and not being able to make the kind of contact that he was earlier in the season. But it feels correctable. It feels like something that there's there's still a worthwhile investment 
to be had to see if you can get something out of him because the natural abilities, the natural talent is there and it's unmistakable. Kid has a swing. The kid has the ability in the past tense, really, to put the bat on the ball. And the kid definitely has the speed. He has more speed than anybody on the team. What do you do with that? I don't know. I don't know. You you can't say he's going to be in center field when you at least think you're going to have Jack Sawinski there. Uh, Maybe the Pirates will go and try to upgrade that position. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll look to move Jack over to right field. Maybe they'll have some other ideas for right field. Maybe Josh Palacios will stun everybody and and take right field. I don't know. I don't know. You can start doing that stuff all day. But just having that very brief self-dialogue that I did there, you can see that those positions aren't set. They're not set in stone. Only left field is. And no, I don't want Bay anywhere near the infield. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit ProjectChildSafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Mark Cunningham, and I got to preface this by saying it was one of many that responded uh, passionately, uh, some of them emotionally, with with real-life stories to tell as it related to Jim Leland being made a candidate for the Baseball Hall of Fame, a vote that will be done on December 3rd at the winter meetings in Nashville. And Mark writes, DK, I was stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, in the early 90s. I played second base for my unit softball team. I was number 13. In honor of Chico Leaned, I wore Pirates gear to practice because Jim Leland brought winning baseball back to Pittsburgh. Uh, three pennants, and he was a strike away from another one for us in Atlanta. Here's to you. Jim Leland. There were a lot of these. There were a lot of these. And to try to fairly and completely represent some of the feedback that came in, there were also a couple people who said, I don't think he belongs. I don't think he belongs in the hall. They looked at his accomplishments versus those of the other managerial candidates that are in this group. Uh, Davey Johnson, Cito Gaston, Lou Pinella. And they didn't like where Leland stacked up with some of those guys. They also looked at the fact that he's, this is probably not very fair, but that he's kind of evenly seen as their guy between Pittsburgh and Detroit with the stop in Miami having just been something to get Wayne Huizenga's money converted into a World Series trophy. And some of them wanted to see more than just that one championship that a lot of people saw as being bought by, here's a reference that's dating myself, blockbuster video money. And it's it, it, it's a fair criticism, you know? And you knew, you knew that if there was going to be any criticism of Leland from a Pittsburgh audience, they were going to start getting into all those debates about Game 7 in 1992 
in all the many ways that all the armchair managers would have done things differently in the eighth and ninth innings had they been in charge in the Pirates dugout in Atlanta rather than Leland. And you've heard, I'm sure, all of them. One of these days, we're going to do a whole episode on that. And yes, it's going to suck. You're going to hate it, but we're still going to do it. Where you get into all the, uh, you know, who should have been uh, pinch hit for, who should have been warming up in the bullpen, the the now uh, tragically late Tim Wakefield could have been utilized to close the game out instead of San Belinda, all this stuff, all this stuff. We're going to do it someday. But what I appreciated more than anything else was was the outpouring. And I don't mean to turn any of this into a negative. Uh, people love the man. People value their interactions with the man. People appreciate uh, the same way that you did in, in your queue here. What he brought back to Pittsburgh, uh, you'd have to be a little bit older to, to understand that this fan base had very understandably high expectations through the 80s because of how great the 70s were. And it wasn't until 1990, 91 and 92 with those three consecutive division championships that that feeling came back and, and it came back personified in a lot of ways because He's, he's such a, a big figure uh, in any setting that he's in by Leland. So thanks for all of that. It's, it's not taken for granted, believe me. Uh, we will be back with another show tomorrow. Tomorrow.